Rita Hayworth is best remembered for being a smoking hot Tinseltown femme fatale and iconic pinup star who took the world by storm during the mid 20th century. But who she really was beyond her image was different than how she represented both on screen and by the insatiable media. In truth, she was a somewhat shy and sensitive woman who managed to get a foothold in the entertainment industry by controlling the men in her life. As a result, she had to contend with a string of tumultuous and troublesome failed marriages. For a brief period, she found a bit of happiness with Orson Welles, producer, director, screenwriter, and actor who's been called one of the greatest and most influential filmmakers of all time. Join Facts First as we take an in-depth look at the ups and downs of this infamous Hollywood relationship. She wasn't always Rita. Born Margarita Carmen Cancino in Brooklyn in 1928, Hayworth was the oldest of two dancers. Eduardo Cancino, her father, was of Romani heritage and hailed from a small town near Seville, Spain. Rita's mother, Volga Hayworth, was an Irish-American who was popular in the theater scene performing with the Ziegfeld Follies. Rita faced intense hardship and heartbreak from her youngest years onward. When she was 12, her dad made her perform at casinos as his dance partner. Eduardo was a fierce man and would often beat her. Hayworth would later confide in her second husband, Orson Welles, that her father sexually abused her as well. Rita wasn't the most adept student as most of her free time was spent practicing her dance routine and performing on stage. She could be found only rarely ever playing or socializing with other kids her age and had very little opportunity to make friends. Her family eventually packed their bags and moved closer to the Mexican border in Southern California. They would regularly travel to Tijuana, where Rita's barbarous father had her perform at flashy nightclubs. While she enjoyed a modicum of success as a child dancer, her days of performing had just begun. In 1937, at age 19, Hayworth got married to her first husband, Eddie Judson. Her parents disapproved of the union from the beginning, seeing as how Judson was nearly twice her age, and it was apparent his intentions was nothing short of selfish. In Barbara Leeming's 1989 Hayworth biography, If This Was Happiness, Hayworth was quoted as saying she had married Judson for love while he merely married her for an investment. For half a decade, Judson treated her as if she had no mind or soul, according to Hayworth. All he cared about was turning his teenage bride into a star, thinking he'd be able to profit off her success if she could get her name in lights. After their marriage inevitably fell apart, Hayworth shared that while Judson helped her advance her career, he also helped himself to her money. But before their marriage dissolved, Judson forced Rita to do just about everything for publicity's sake. He would dictate her appearance and change it frequently, ordering her to have medical treatments conducted to move her hairline back before ordering her to dye at Auburn to look, quote, less Latin. In time, Hayworth became known as the most submissive and cooperative girl in Hollywood, but his domineering didn't stop at that. Judson reportedly was even okay with pimping out his young wife to other influential Hollywood bigwigs, encouraging her to sleep with them in exchange for special favor in the industry. When Rita refused to have sex with one of these men, Columbia Pictures studio head Harry Cohn, who had just signed her to a lucrative contract, Hayworth created a decade-spanning grudge with the man. As she enjoyed increased success in the industry, all the while being pimped out by her scumbag husband, Hayworth changed her name to sound less exotic, adopting a more American-sounding name. She then starred in a string of films opposite Fred Astaire, and almost overnight, she became a household name. In 1942, after years of being estranged from her family and enduring Judson's cruelty, Hayworth finally filed for divorce. A little under two years later, she got married once again, this time to an individual she would call the great love of her life. Orson Welles, an upgrade from her previous marriage. Orson Welles was one of the most prestigious filmmakers and actors of his day. Years before he ever had the pleasure of meeting Hayworth face to face, he had already seen her pinup spreads. And as the majority of people thought who actually didn't know her, he assumed she must be like the femme fatale image she was portrayed as in the pages of The Gossip Rags. But after getting to know her on a one-on-one -on -one level, Orson discovered that she wasn't the seductress he had imagined. Hayworth was, in fact, far from it. She was merely a shy and somewhat insecure young starlet, desperately trying to find her place in the world just like everyone else. Wells quickly made her feel right at home in his circle. The only way he knew how to get her out of her shell was by pretending he could read her mind, only for her to open up and correct him. It was a remarkably effective strategy to get the burgeoning young star talking. The two celebrities fell for each other quickly, and by 1943, they got married while Hayworth was taking a lunch break in between takes of her movie Cover Girl. 
Since Hayworth was still needed on the set, the couple unfortunately couldn't enjoy a honeymoon. But that didn't matter as the two were beyond thrilled to be together. They quickly became known as one of the happiest and most adorable couples in Hollywood. Hayworth subsequently moved in with Wells at his lavish mansion. She wanted to step out of the limelight and escape the constant pressures of showbiz. At that point, she hated being a movie star and was willing to do just about anything other than acting. Wells likewise desired to leave Hollywood and get involved with politics. All she wanted to do was to please her new, brilliant, successful husband. As such, she did everything she could to be the perfect wife. She read all of his books, supported his political aspirations, and bore his child. Orson Welles Lost Interest in Rita Welles displayed very little interest in establishing a stable home with Hayworth. Whenever she would suggest they buy a proper home to raise their family, he would tell her he didn't want that kind of responsibility. Furthermore, he would say he regretted getting married in the first place as it impeded his freedom. When Hayworth became pregnant with their daughter, Orson had an affair with Gloria Vanderbilt. But it wasn't just her whom the filmmaker cheated on his wife with. Wells repeatedly committed acts of infidelity with various women, including Judy Garland. Not only was he unfaithful, but he increasingly became detached from and insensitive to his wife's needs. In response to her husband's selfishness, Hayworth hit the bottle hard, becoming an often volatile alcoholic. Eventually, all these factors led to Orson and Rita's divorce in 1947. Shortly before divorcing Wells, Hayworth starred in the movie Gilda, in which she portrayed one of her most iconic and provocative roles. After Wells, Hayworth married three other men and had high-profile romances and affairs with several others, but she never found the same kind of spark she felt with Orson. Each of these marriages ended in divorce, and all of her other flings left her feeling more and more lost. In retrospect, Orson later said the way he treated Rita was one of his biggest regrets. He further reminisced that she was the one person who had the most striking impact on his perspective in life. Hayworth's Life After Orson Although Gilda had turned Rita into a star, being in the spotlight was never something she wanted. It was domestic bliss she was most interested in finding. In 1949, she stepped away from Hollywood once again to marry Prince Ali Khan. Unfortunately, that marriage was nothing but turbulent. After divorcing him four years later, she returned to Hollywood and appeared in several more films, including Miss Sadie Thompson and They Came to Cordura. While she starred in a few relatively forgettable films in the 60s, her career was all but over after her appearance in 1972's The Wrath of God. Hayworth was diagnosed with early-onset Alzheimer's disease in 1980, although she had been displaying symptoms of the ailment since as early as 1960. She passed away at age 68 on May 14, 1987, in New York City. Now it's time to hear from you. Did Orson make a huge mistake by taking Rita for granted? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.